Faris Jamal is a photographer and founder of Shadow Studios, a Dubai-based leading creative and production house known for its prominent work in photography and videography in the region. Originally from Lebanon, Faris has been in Dubai for almost 20 years. His camera has taken him to the four corners of the globe and he's worked with global and regional leading companies creating high-end content and photography and is the personal photographer for many celebrities, singers, performers and politicians from the Arab world. Faris, thanks so much for coming on the Life Lab. My pleasure. <laughs> it's great to see you. Um, tell us about, let's start with what inspired you to become a photographer? Actually, I started, I was nine years old. I was started helping my father in my old town in Lebanon. So I was going with him in all the shoots. He's, he, he was a photographer? No, actually he's an electrician, but he got a camera to do, to cover the events in the city. Okay. This is how it started, uh, and um, I was uh, like I was nine years old when I shot the first shoot with him because his photographer, the one he was dealing with, he didn't come at that day. So I started studying in the school and the weekends, helping him in the his shoots. He was doing videography, I was doing photography, and then at nine years old. Yes, <laughs> it's very young <laughs> to start. <laughs> And what did you just start learning by yourself? You yeah, just actually, I learned a lot with the, my life in the scout. In the Boy, Boy Scouts? Yes. And I was I had my camera. I was trying on my friends with, in the campings, uh, following the stars, the clouds. This is why I, 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 I understood the light from the sunrise, the ray of lights, how it's making the long shadows. And I... I was like discovering the life actually with my lens. Mm. Even when they go hunting, I go with my lens, my big lens, just to shoot the birds, not to shoot the birds. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> since then I was, yeah, but there is a place where my life changed and it was a competition on the local TV in Lebanon. And I applied as it was a section of photography mm -hmm. and I didn't, do photography at that time but I I won the first prize I was 17 wow yeah, yes. or, 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 or Lebanon it was like a, a national competition national competition and do you what was the the photo that you won do no you actually it was a studio okay and you need to shoot in the studio the portraits lifestyle some nice angles I was 17 all the uh, the people the participants were like 35 I look at them like my father age but <laughs> by chance and I was like this is what uh, changed my life actually but uh, why did it change your life because it, it made you realize this is what you want to do or no I didn't know that I this is what I want to do actually because I finished my studied my, st my studies in the university mm -hmm. and sorry in the school and then I decided to go do computer science okay this is the big thing. So I did one year. I studied math, math, math. And I was doing photography at the same time as helping my father, the commercial photography. Then one of my friends, I don't remember who, who, it, who told me that there is, you can study photography. And for me, it was something, you know, how can I study photography? And uh, the strange think when you the, the luck in your life when something ne leads you to somewhere else mm -hmm. at the last you know that there is the exam of end of year exams like your finals in yeah. school yeah yes and I went and I asked for the the major of photography and the, the other university okay and uh, the, the chance was that the same day I have to decide here you have the to, to enter Computer the photography. Science. No, oh. the, the end of year uh, exams, it, it was the same day of to go and apply for the university, the second, the photography major. Okay. So I have to decide, I go, I lose the year or I go start a new life. Right, okay. And my parents and all my friends, they told me, you won this competition, how you're going to, 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 why you're going to study photography? You know photography. And I knew nothing at that time about photography. So at that day in the morning, 
I was my father driving me. I told him I need to go study photography. So and I lost this year, and it was a big turning point in my life. Okay, in Madan, yeah, because did your parents see? I suppose maybe back then they didn't think, oh, you can make a career out of being a photographer. No. no. So they it thought was, you were crazy. They want me to be a computer, computer engineering. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and that they didn't help me on the decision. And my father told me. Why you're going to study photography? My, you won this competition. It was a national, and it was nothing. Mm, All my so knowledge young. was later on. Of and, course, uh, when I studied the art of photography, and I transformed this art to business, and this is uh, what we're gonna talk about it later on. But th- this was, you know, I imagine myself sometimes. What if? Yeah, I was. I I was working on a computer science or engineering, but it was a different life. Of course, it was totally different. Yeah, because when you are a photographer and you became famous and you traveled the world to do projects, and every day you see different lesson in your life. So every day, sometimes I do open heart surgery photo shoot. Sometimes I do a factory, industrial, beauty, fashion, everything. You can see. Every day you have lessons. Mm, I, I mean, it's a completely different life than if you'd ended up being yeah. a computer working computer of science. Course, I know there is no mot- monotone. It's it's very uh, you don't do anything the same. Like now, I just came back from five countries. Every country has a different uh, kind of shoot. Mm. I'm not at the same place. I'm not doing the same thing every day. So it's it's amazing. It's the the richness is when you have you don't do the routine. Of course, and you're getting to be creative every day and working on yeah. like really interesting, beautiful projects. Um, and so you you decided to study photography. Then what happened? So you ended up you've been in Dubai for thirty years almost, right? No, to almost twenty years. Oh, sorry, twenty years. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you end up coming here after you studied photography? Oh, this is a sad story why I came <laughs> here, but it became very a good story. But in life, you have to transfer every crisis, every problem to a an opportunity, a happy ending. Yes, it's 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 something to uh, to enjoy, and you don't have to do oh uh, this happened because I came here because of a war. A sad war happened to Lebanon in mm-hmm. two thousand six. It was something you you cannot survive so but i need to tell you before that before that uh, after i finished my diploma mm-hmm. they asked me to teach photography oh in and, your uni- uh, and in the, the same US. university okay and i was doing a lot of uh, projects with all and i got uh, almost when i finished and at the same time i was working with the professional photography mm-hmm. not the one i was doing with my father yeah and uh, my even my perspective to photography changed. It's not only events, it's something you can do. Comp- I mean, when I studied photography, I start seeing the composition. Mm-hmm. I was I, know, I knew about the lighting, but I it's it's a combination between composition and lighting and drawing with the light. So what I, in, what photographers were inspiring you at the time? I mean, what? Yeah, I. I like a lot Ansel Adams, but Ansel. Ansel Adams, he started, I mean, when I studied uh, photography at the university, we studied art, like uh, artists, we were looking at oh, Mondrian, for example, mm-hmm. the shapes of geometrical forms, mm-hmm. how the squares, the triangles and his painting. So I was transforming this to photography. When I did my diploma, I did landscape photography on the diploma, mm-hmm. but uh, I was looking at the lines in the landscape and doing like kind of like a painting comp- composition with guidelines. I see the lines with triangles, the squares, the shapes. It's like a painting. This is my diploma. It was about landscape. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, I started doing portraits for some famous artists and uh, like very famous artists in the Middle East. And I became very famous in Lebanon. I never thought I'm going to leave Lebanon. I had a beautiful Roman of theater studio in my city, Batroun, and another studio in Beirut. I was traveling the Middle East to do projects and coming back to home. 
happy, uh, like very proud. But when I came to Dubai, I was exposed to the world in a way that Oh my God, you were very small. Like you were a big fish in a small pond in Lebanon and then it was a different world. When yeah, you came but in. with every crisis in my life, not only in my life, in the region or in the countries or with the recession or with the uh, COVID or everything, always I have this feeling that something is happening, let's change the strategy. That you so could find a way to to make it work for you survive yes yeah. but from for example when i was in lebanon i was working f- like as a the photographer and my assistant mm-hmm. but when i came here i saw no it's different there are companies there are structure so we built our company so this is how you started shadow yeah b- but it was before it was uh, shadow started with my partner too, yes but i i make it more advanced I put the creative ideas, I make it bigger, mm-hmm. but it's not because I want, I have a plan. I didn't have a plan. I, I follow all, always my sixth sense and everything. And because I'm always positive, not positive, but like a stupid positive. So there is something like, wow, the <laughs> life is beautiful. But there is this logic with uh, always I solve the problems and very fast. I can see it before. I don't know why. But I cannot so explain it. Is that something that you always nurture? Did you just always have that or do you feel yeah, like... Yeah, from and, all my life. I have 100 stories about something that... An intuition about what to always, do next. Always, always. Even with something that how I got my first thing, visa. How I, it's, it's something that I feel, I follow my feelings, but sometimes you, you lose, but... But always I got what I want in a very nice way. It's not like I I go and I throw myself from the mountain or from the helicopter. Mm-hmm. No, but always there is a plan. I plan a lot for, um, and I have this long uh, feeling that I have long time. I'm not in a rush to, yeah. to do things. And you know, some some things I, I, I dream about it, but I, I plan for it for many years to mm-hmm. happen. And I got it at the end. So to go back to the Shadow. story, yeah. <laughs> to Lebanon, when I left, uh, I came here, I was do, uh, knowing nothing what will happen next. So I came here because I had a client here. They used to go to Lebanon to shoot with me in my studio. But I came here to meet with them. Then my French Joe told me that Shadow is here. He was alone working in Shadow. Mm -hmm. So I told him, okay, I need to change the structure. So we got people with us. We photographers, producer. We became the most known uh, professional photographers company. Mm -hmm. Then we we started doing videos. Then now we are a production house in six countries. Yeah, you're in UAE, in Saudi, in... Qatar, Qatar Kuwait, Kuwait Lebanon, Lebanon and Abu Dhabi license and Dubai license but what happened I mean for example in this stage of my life I changed my name to the company name so instead of having Faris Jamal the photographer the famous photographer in Lebanon every everyone wants me Faris from Shadow yeah no before right. Shadow I'm talking about in Lebanon mm-hmm. they want Faris as photographer they don't want uh, they don't know that there is something else. If I send I someone, they lo- they will not trust this other photographers to go and cover. So I cannot take. When I came here, I create a trusty like name of a company, and I melt my name inside. So now everybody they trust the company. Mm-hmm. This is a good strategy just to, to teach people not to think with the to be egoist or something like uh, to think about myself, mm-hmm. my name, my... No, the future is not like this. Now, uh, life changed. And with the social media, with all what is happening around, this is why I, I'm always following these steps. So now there is no more my name, okay? Um, they trust us, they trust the company name, and they come to us to provide them the best. Mm-hmm. So this is very smart, but I, I didn't plan for it. But it came like 
I don't want to think about myself. I need to think about the company. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's a perspective of thinking. Of course. And uh, you've got over 50 employees now, right? Across, yeah, yeah. across Shadow. A Last lot of year we were with Expo. We had 42 photographers, videographers just for Expo for six months. That's yeah. incredible. And you're working on some huge, huge projects in the region. Since you started Shadow, can you share some of the work that, you're most proud of or, or projects that stand out in your mind that you felt were the most beautiful or that you know really made an impact on people actually i'm very proud that i was with expo since 2013 mm -hmm. this is uh, i mean it's an achievement for the country and i'm proud of it and i was with them in france when they announced that dubai won the, the expo to host the expo yeah it was a very nice moment of my life as uh, I, and I'm proud that last year we were part of this big event. And it UAE. was incredible, yeah. Uh, but there is a, pr a project that I don't forget all my life. And because we create the idea and we create the concept. And, and actually it was an experience in 2008 before they start building Yas Island. Mm -hmm. So Aldar approached us to do a concept for for a future island that it doesn't exist at that time so we said yeah it's gonna we, we did this research and we discovered that it's gonna look like miami in a way like you have golf courses on the sea pools on the sea beaches uh, hotels ferrari world and all this mm -hmm. so we create a concept we pitch for it and then we won it it was 90 degrees from above so this is a perspective that you don't see at that time, there is no drone. Mm -hmm. There was but, no drone. Yeah. So how did... 2008, we did an... I had, we went to Miami with the client, with the agency, for 20 days. Two helicopters for 20 days with us <sighs> all day. And preparing the sets, it was staged. Like, for example, Marina Walk with people and shadow at 5 p.m. We put 50 people in the street. We go... By the helicopter, we do one shot. So it was 50 images. So you were in the helicopter over For 20 the, days. For 20 days taking yes. photos. Yes. Oh. And how, like, were you kind of hanging out of the helicopter? I was sleeping 90 degrees doing, but uh, we did two days in Maranello in Italy because there is the Ferrari World Ferrari School there. Okay. For the, because this, yes. the island was only sand. Now you see there is Warner Brothers, uh, Ferrari word, water word, all this, but it was like, we need to duplicate. And we did like a, a water park from 90 degrees. Uh, we did everything on the island now, but we did it in Miami and two days in Maranello. And you were in the helicopter taking photos? 20 days. And is that not, I mean, I can, when you think of photographers taking their best shots, they're usually like in a very controlled environment. You know, they're, everything is still. I mean, so the helicopter is moving and the light's no. changing or. No, the light, I start, I, I do the choreography before of everything. OK. So we, drew, we did the drawings for every scene. It was 52 images only. OK. It's not like randomly. Mm -hmm. You go and shoot. So it was staged, yes. Because at, at the end, it's advertising. It's yes, not yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put the people, the strollers, the bicycles, for example, on a marina walk. And then I go, it's, it's there from the air. It's very easy because I'm doing 90 degrees. It's not like 45. Or, okay, you're not moving it's, around. It's from the top. For example, imagine the golf course picture. It's amazing. So three players. I know that 5 p.m. the shadow will be long. So you don't see the, the people. You see the body language on the shadow. Wow. So on the floor with the sea, golf course on the sea. So it was like signature uh, images for them. That's incredible. Yeah, and they followed later the same uh, concept for many projects. For many projects. And you won um, the International Photography from Award. From one of the pictures, yes, on the beach. It was like um, umbrellas, people uh, lay on the beach with uh, very nice uh, composition. Yeah, this uh, was the IPA, the International Photography Award in New York. And so did you you went to New York to receive? No, that? no, I didn't go, but I sent the pictures and some other projects I'm proud of. It's uh, the exhibition, my personal work that I do. Can you talk a bit about that? You've done a, a few for you do the bicycle one. Bicycle, one. It's, yeah, but the, the best the one was like an in, in, um, 
in LA okay in Hollywood it was uh, an exhibition uh, it's a technique that I do in the dark room mm-hmm. so instead of developing the the whole picture so I use the paint the brush and the brooms and the sponge to develop part of the image with the chemicals so it looks like a painting and you cannot repeat so I did an exhibition in uh, in LA since I, I think seven years ago and the uh, personal I don't have a lot of time now but yeah. I'm ev- almost every two years I do one exhibition and that was one that you're uh, that stands out that you're most proud of the one that you yeah, didn't I know. like to do my personal work because the commercial work and the advertising work is taking a lot of time mm-hmm. you know there is a lot of stress and uh, but I'm dealing with an Something that you have to be convinced that you can solve all the problems mm-hmm. in a very uh, convenient way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Faris, so obviously you've been really successful. I mean, what, you know, in your career and so well known in the region, what does success personally mean to you? I mean, what do you, what are the metrics that you, you consider that you measure against for, for your own success in uh, life? Okay. For me, the balance in life is very important. Yani between success, your f- family, yeah, you mean? F- and uh, between everything. Between your fun, your... Everything. Because if you work every day, 20 hours, and and you you are making a lot of success and money, this is not life. At the end, you, we live this life once. So once you cannot repeat it. Mm-hmm. So you 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 cannot regret the best moment that you you didn't do. So and uh, for example, this balance is very important. Sometimes you see that it's difficult when you talk to people. They tell you, no, I can't. I have a lot of work. I can't do this. I can't. For me, my the freedom in my work that I can do everything I want. Not uh, let I uh, let, let's say I want to go sit in Maldives for one month. It's not logical, mm-hmm. but I'm saying at least to spend moments with your kids, with your family, with your friends. When you go childhood friends, mm-hmm. you tell stories, you laugh. Mm-hmm. You you don't you don't have to stage everything in your life and to go and sit with people. Uh, they are toxic or they are not making you happy because you want you have to be there and you can be there but you have to choose the people around you it's very important and uh, success is with the balance that when you feel satisfied with everything you do Mm -hmm. if you feel satisfied so this is the success for me it's not about how how much you have money in the bank and i'm i feel always that i'm the the more rich person on this planet because not because I have money I don't have money I spend all my money and I do all my dreams but I have I feel rich because of my the friends that I have the people that I know whatever I want I can call someone to to, to help me about it mm-hmm. but you do services so you know the uh, life is it, it's about exchange you know give the, and take and give and take and always and I love to give without anything you in do. return. Yeah. And, and building up trust with people. It takes time. It's all lots of moments. You're totally right. right. It doesn't happen. Qu- it's all these little things over a spaces of time that makes. This is a, the, the new generation. They are not. Uh, they, they don't have this understanding. And I'm trying to teach this to my kids. But they don't understand that they have to give, to give, to give. And then take once. But. They, they don't understand. I don't know. We lived in something different. What, is that the advice that you give to, like, if you think of advice that you wish, that things that you know now that you wish you'd known at the start of your career, is that some of the advice that you'd give to people starting out about, you know, the importance of building up trust in relationships, whether it's whether it's a, a work partnership or a friend or your partner, or whoever it is, like investing that time to build up. Um, Trust. Uh, uh, yeah, this is very important. I I'm very happy that I reached a point that m- my word is a contract. Mm-hmm. I don't have to always sign a contract and read the the articles and I don't know. So for me, what you do 
uh, when you build this trust, mm-hmm. whatever you say, they trust that you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. This is very important. That is so important. Yeah. yeah. That But is... this was experience. But Anna, from the beginning, I was raised on something like, I don't know. I Sometimes I sit and I say, how can I reach this, uh, this, uh, I mean, way of thinking and to deal with people and very open, like I don't have secrets. I can say anything I want and I'm not afraid from anything because mm-hmm. I'm always moving. Mm-hmm. And I was, and from my life, I was going step by step by step by step. I never jumped 10 steps. It was always gradual. You were uh, progressing uh, bit by bit. But, yeah. And always something happened to lead me to the next step and to the next step. And the, there is no life without problems, and, but you have to know how to solve your problems. Mm-hmm. What? I don't do anxiety. I don't know how nobody teach me this, but this is experience and life. What about you, you're saying, you know, you progress bit by bit and your career uh, unfolded that way. But and you're giving advice to your kids and, you know, people that work with you, I'm sure younger photographers. What was is there any advice that you received when you were younger that stands out in your in your head that really helped guide your career? A lot of a lot of uh, events or actions happened to maybe to take me to to this kind of thinking. Yeah, but one uh, no, there is nothing one. Or but there is a lot of things happen that accumulatively yes. guided your career. Mm. But but I was always I believe uh, in my co- career. I was in the beginning. I was my aim was to do beautiful images to be happy when I'm working and I don't feel, I never felt the stress, but I was working happy uh, that I was feeling that I'm growing and I'm becoming more famous and people call me from all the Middle East and they know about me and they like my work. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think about how much money I need to make in the bank. I was thinking that how much projects, beautiful projects I need to do. When you put your soul in your work, you're not working for, Mm -hmm. like you go to work and you say, I need to go home. No, I work, I'm happy. I'm getting lessons. I'm knowing every day different lesson. Even now I'm 52 and I'm still learning lessons. Every day before maybe I die, I'm still learning lessons. And the young people, they, they don't have to think that I know everything. Nobody knows everything. Nobody knows everything. Yeah. And even now, I why Shadow is uh, so being so- more successful? Because of always I inject a new blood, new people, uh, new, I mean, uh, generation, because they have the new ideas. I'm now feeling something that I'm the old uh, generation. So in Shadow now, there is four generations. There is the 50 people in 50s, people in 40s, people in 30s and the new 20s. But so they all bring value, right? Everybody. A lot of value, especially Everybody. the young people, the new blood. But you need to s- shape them. Mm-hmm. This is what I do when I see someone very talented and they don't know anything about the life and about work or hard work or how many hours or how to, to deal with people with clients yeah so i shape them i put them with me i work with them daily i deal with them not like the boss like the friend and then they are they they love me they believe in me and it's a it's a win-win situation challenges that you faced i mean you've obviously faced a lot of challenges to get where you are and how you overcame them is there anything that stands out you know a particular lesson that you've learned on over anything that you can share uh, every day you have new challenges. Mm-hmm. This is a, a must. You cannot. Uh, but this is good, right? It yeah, happens. but there is some something you can. But there is big challenges. Like, for example, uh, when we were starting the company, like when we started, I I I came here 2006. Mm-hmm. But for example, 2008, the recession came. Yes. So before, when the recession came, I. I start growing the company and 
you have to go against <laughs> the challenge. So instead of being mm. afraid, some uh, companies shut down, shut down the co uh, their companies. Mm -hmm. And so I was growing, I was uh, moving against the, the tide. Yes. So here when I put I open new departments and then always I was following the what is happening in the market. So instead, for example, instead of doing this, we changed the strategy instead of covering, for example, uh, like a lot of big events, big events. So we went doing documentaries, series. So and then every two years we put new departments, new ideas, new creative ideas. And now recently before COVID, I was ready for COVID without knowing that COVID is coming. And what, what do you mean? In what way? Because I was, I saw that everything is online and everything is becoming more online. And uh, let's do something for social media, uh, uh, creating some content uh, for, you know, this mm -hmm. new, so I opened a department for social media to sell clients with content because photography, videography. And then when COVID came, everything is shut down. We were working more than before. It was the best year in our company. But I didn't know, but I felt something is coming, but I didn't know that it was so fast so to come suddenly in one, like mm. six months, but I was ready. And always there is something that when you see you read, you analyze, you feel, you do what you feel, you, you, but nothing is for sure. Mm -hmm. But like now, for example, I opened three, four branches. So because I know this is the future here in the region for at least five years mm -hmm. and the value of my company, it's becoming more and more mm -hmm. valuable. And, uh, I don't know, maybe something will happen, but <laughs> this is, you cannot see uh, always there is a solution and good solutions. And sometimes you see, you don't have to think that, oh, my life is bad. No, maybe this, when you feel, felt it at that time that you're uh, luck, struggling or, uh, but it was good step. For example, if I need to think about my life because of the war that happened in Lebanon, I did, I never thought I would come to Dubai mm -hmm. and I never thought I would be married. <laughs> and yeah, in my life, believe me, I came here, I opened a company, my, the way of thinking it's uh, to deal with business. It's different now because of Dubai, because of UAE, because mm -hmm. of all the nationalities and the people, they live here. Mm -hmm. And I met my wife and I'm with three kids and I was doing lectures against marriage. So you don't, you never know where life is taking you but you have to take every opportunity in your life so you were doing lectures against marriage yes and i'm very happy as in with, with your friends and people with all with the people they know me even with every couple with my friends they want to marry uh, to get married i'll tell them no so what changed your mind when you met angie your this wife this is the always there is the right moment and the right place you never know because the, I didn't even maybe and if I stayed in Lebanon, I will, I'm not married now. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I never thought that I will leave my city and my country and to come to another and to build another life in another country. This is, this is a very big challenge for me. And because I know myself, my friends know me, knows me that I will never do it. And they were surprised why you're going because the war came and two months I have I had 16 employees in Lebanon and I, I need to to jump for plan B yeah. and the airport airport was destroyed. I, I, I left from Syria airport to come to Dubai. Imagine with my camera, That's insane. Hey, but the, to, myself to take this decision and I'm involved in my city and I'm the founder of Batroom Festival, yeah, I'm about... elected by the people, all this and I left. I know that you're heavily involved in Patron. Tell us a bit about Patron, even for people that don't know, maybe not, they don't know Lebanon and, you know, where it is in relation to Beirut and what you do there and a bit about, you do you do a lot of work yeah. for the people in the city of Patron. Yes, we, we lived in a beautiful city, but nobody know about it. 
but actually it's a very beautiful city on the on the Mediterranean Sea. It's a fisherman city, but it's uh, it's very authentic. There is uh, something Phoenician, Roman uh, archaeological sites. There's an amphitheater it's there. It's in my house, in my garden. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I worked all my city, all my life in this city just uh, before I. Uh, I was elected in the in the municipality council, but I mean, uh, like I was working as for the love of the city because mm-hmm. we believe that it's the most beautiful city, and nobody knows about it. It's and so beautiful, yeah. It's yeah, but no, before the war, nobody know about. After the war, it was occupied by uh, any any. Anyways, nobody came, mm-hmm. but because I was putting. I was shooting for uh, the Middle East Airlines magazine. I was always giving them pictures about Batroun and people know more about Batroun and organizing some uh, like touristic days and for free we offer all the people just to come and see the city mm-hmm. and this is how it started. But I, I, I was working during the scout then I was elected at the municipality for 18 years, six years, six years, six years, three times. And I am the founder of the Batroun Festival, and this festival is the most famous now in Lebanon. When is that festival? Every summer. I start in like 20 years, 25 years ago, the festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, it became a very famous festival. Now we have the best, uh, uh, like the, we we have this, uh, the Mediterranean Film Festival every summer. We do it outdoor. In Batroun? Yes, it's amazing. It's, they come from all the Mediterranean, from Greece, from Italy, from all these cities to do to participate it's very inter- important we do concerts uh, let, let's not now we have i'm not the president anymore because <laughs> since, don't have four, time. since five years i i had my friend uh, say he's the president now but i mean i'm involved all year i do i had them a lot i'm with them all the time but now now just to give you the conclusion but rune is the most uh, famous city in lebanon during this this difficulties and the economic crisis in Lebanon, Batroun is full of people during summer. It's like uh, Mykonos or uh, Saint-Tropez, but you have to see now this week, uh, now uh, there is the capital de Noël, this is the Christmas capital. Mm-hmm. So it's full of people. It's uh, like this summer we had like every weekend around 20,000 people visiting. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah, and, and even, you know, for people outside the region, it's it's easy to get to, right? You can, once you get to Beirut, it's... Yeah, it's, it's like one hour one drive, hour. but uh, there is now around 200 uh, boutique hotels, beautiful Hotel de Charme, uh, so three rooms, five rooms. It's, mm. it's amazing, yeah. Uh, it's wonderful all the work that you've done to kind of um, help develop the city and make people aware of it. The photos, if you look them up online, it's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's it's how the the pleasure is to give just for something that it's for the next generation. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, that you want something in return. And do many people, young people, I mean, are there generations still living there? Are there, they there a lot. Really? We have, they are the best windsurfers. They work, uh, they are cool people uh, working on the beach with long hair. So. Like artists and yeah, yeah. creative people. It's, it's very nice. I want to ask you about um, what you think makes a successful photograph. Oh, this is a very difficult question because, you know, with the taste of people, everyone has different taste. Mm-hmm. But what we learned from the university, it's about... Of course, I know it's about lighting. Beaut- I, this is what I know. That <laughs> it's about beautiful light, beautiful composition, if we're talking about artistic, mm-hmm. and beautiful moment if it's uh, something else, like event or coverage. But with the new world now, there is no norm anymore. The new world is like you can find some very... Uh, without any artistic value, a small photograph. And uh, it's worth like the price is 200,000 euros or 1 million euros. But you look at it and you say, why I need to buy this? The world is changing, even with the metaverse world, with NFT now. Mm -hmm. And you see any teddy bear photograph with million dollars. Mm -hmm. 
you cannot explain and hala for us the best picture is is you have the ana for me it's about lighting if you have because for me the the photographer the artist photographer mm-hmm. like the painter painter draw with the paint brush no no we draw with the light and I, i wait for the right moment now i have a project i woke up at 4:30 in the morning to see this beautiful light in the morning but with this new world they can create everything on photoshop they can take a very ugly picture at clouds at light at anything to make it beautiful and to sell it it's on photoshop and I, i'm i'm very happy that i'm from the old generation that i used to know the film the feeling of the uh, emulsion the emulsion mm-hmm. the, the 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 chemicals this feeling of the black and black and white grainy film mm-hmm. with the slide with the color uh, different kind of feeling of the uh, gelatin the 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 film the sensitive uh, do you think there's something more authentic about photo you know photographs that are taken by a human photographer that understands how the light works and how to capture something that's beautiful or do you think there's an, you know when you look at photo photoshopped images or what about ai generated images an ai generated image won a big global uh, competition did you see that of yes. like the renaissance people looking out into the future it was this and it won an award and it's ai generated what no, what no, are you now with this word uh, you cannot answer any of these questions because uh they can do anything they they can change anything they can uh, you you don't know because the taste of people is different now mm-hmm. the client i mean or the spectator the spectator yes it's different they are they are the yeah you know, my son or my daughter if she looks or uh, on my images mm-hmm. and she sees something on tiktok it's for her this is different she don't know how to evaluate the art now when you see something for like uh, for example uh, uh, any any of the artist okay you cannot i mean before you can buy this and 20 million dollars but mm-hmm. now you're buying something virtual doesn't exist for for more double uh, triple the price mm-hmm. so i don't think there is any rule anymore it's evolving in a speed way you cannot hala if you want me to tell you about what i think from the old uh, i mean the art before like photographers like you mentioned ansel mm. Adams Ansel or Adams. saliman or yes, herb ritz yes. or herb ritz is, yeah but at that time they were doing something that nobody can do mm-hmm. now with the digital cameras everybody can take and you know, i have photographers in my companies they don't only the digital they didn't they didn't study live the the old and the new era era so even with the digital forget about the film and everything before even with the digital now they have different perspective even with the color taste and the color grading and everything they are doing this is why we need them and they understand what the people wants now not before this is the thing yeah it's interesting how it's evolving it really is especially with the ai aspects yeah and i'm mm-hmm. looking at all the pictures every yeah uh, with the cgi and yeah. everything we are doing now and the, the metaverse world and you can uh, buy a land or a boat or even a picture or uh, any any artwork you can see something not we don't see in our brain but this is we need to admit it this is what is next we have to see it to look at it we like it we don't like it it's a taste but this exists now and how do you feel about that i mean this is what is next i mean you know when you've got three young kids when you think about you know how their lives and careers are going to develop does that it's a different it's a different i cannot say anything about it because they don't know i mean what is coming in the few months not few years you don't see yeah i know what I, what i did in my life i was playing in the neighborhood with my friends with the ball and this now they sit 
20 hours on the screens and they, they are more exposed and they know more more than us in every subject you can talk with. Mm-hmm. They know everything. I'm surprised about what, you know, my son, he's six, seven, and he knows, I'm surp- when he talk, I see from where he learned, but it's something that, okay, they are shaping their personality from younger age. Now maybe we start shaping our personality in the 20s, maybe. We were 20, not <laughs> like seven, six. They know everything. They know everything about any subject. You cannot teach them. You can teach them. You can teach them values. Mm-hmm. But other than this, nothing. There's an aspect of them, especially kids spending so much time online that they miss out on developing social skills, like with other, you know, direct contact with. We're trying. Well, you have. I mean, you're you. They have siblings, right? So they're playing yeah. and stuff together. But let's say you siblings know, in Lebanon only on occasions when they go to Christmas and summer. Mm. But even their siblings, they are the same like them. <laughs> they are always. They okay. have their activities. But what we are trying to do with them to go out a lot without the iPads, mm. to travel a lot, to show them the world. But for them, they live in Dubai. They have everything and. <laughs> there is a lot of funny stories but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting it really is i mean I, you know not just obviously you have your family but just other kids as well you know when they're growing up now that they that they sometimes maybe lack the opportunity to develop their own social skills with other people and you know because they're like you said when you were little or when i was little you played with you were outside you were playing with your friends you were always learning in a different way you maybe weren't as exposed to so much information, but you were developing skills on how to, you know, understanding social cues of situations because you had much more direct interaction with people. That's a huge life learning skill to have, yeah. you know. You cannot do anything I know. about it. Yeah. You cannot, Anna, I tried, but sometimes they, uh, some parents, they tell you, no, you have to put this, you have to, this is not uh, yeah. like this now and this time, it's uh, an it's believe me that horse is, bolted. is something different and difficult <laughs> yeah yeah the cat is out of the bag i wanted to ask you about um some books or movies that had an impact in your life or even for you works of art that really you know did was there anything that stands out that yeah, you feel actually uh, from the beginning uh, when francis ford coppola did the godfather I was always learning from the framing, from the lighting, because it was the first time when they don't, sorry, they let, they don't let the full face. It was coming from up with the shadow under the eyes. So this is how it, I started from the first movie to learn the, the neorealism kind of shooting. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, uh, people in the neighborhood uh, walking in the streets, uh, the light coming, and it was a real cinema mm-hmm. at that time, not s- Alexa, yeah, and digital, like the same in the photography. Uh, then later, there is a lot of movies that I like. We watch a lot of movies, especially now with my wife, she's a film director, and yes. we watch a lot, and we travel to see some film festivals all over the world, and uh, we see different uh, perspective from directors and. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually, uh, yes, it's uh, this movie. Till now, I watch it maybe six hundred times. The Godfather. But every time I see it on the TV, I watch it again. It's three very long with three. Uh, three, yeah. the Godfather one, two, and three. Episodes, yeah. Yes. Uh, but even it's three hours coming. Mm. Sometimes I I walk to sleep. I put on the TV and I see it. Like, this is one of a Your kind. Friend. Yeah. But yeah, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it is. There is a lot of uh, uh, cinema paradiso, or there is a lot of good movies. But uh, and they influenced your your work. Yeah, and uh, actually, I like to see it. Just I don't know if they are. It inspires you. But, but but no, it's not like this. It's not like I take ideas from it. But no. I I kept it in my mind. I I I can see in this because I like this kind of shadow and light and. I don't remember it, but I, of course, it will influence me and, 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 and directly, will, mm-hmm. and directly. It, it, it's sort of nurturing your oh, artistic yes. spirit, I yeah. guess, when you see 
other yeah. beautiful works of art. I like, when I travel, I love to go see exhibitions and see uh, works. But now, this I used to do a lot on when I was 30 and 25, mm. 30 to go see like Moadula Photo in Paris or some good exhibition. But now we can see it everywhere. So now we're sitting at home, we can search, we can see. Mm -hmm. so it's not like before you need to travel to see it. So No. What about young artists, that contemporary artists nowadays, you know, painters or film, uh, you know, film directors that have... A lot. That there inspire lot. you. There is a lot of good people. Any uh, yeah, and recently, for example, there is this movie... Uh, not recently. I, mean, I think ten years ago we watched this movie called uh, Nine. Nine. It's like a musical, but it's very, very, very artistic for me. Always we we see, but yeah, يعني, there is nothing like the masterpieces mm -hmm. that we had before in our library. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the new movies. It's uh, more entertainment, but we search for the festivals. Festivals are short movies. And very good movies. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of now uh, amazing, amazing movies came from Lebanon, from Lebanese directors and uh, uh, artists. There is a lot of, uh, and I, I can name 25 good movies, but uh, yeah, I think uh, there is a lot of good work and bad work and everything. Like you have to choose what you like. And Good work for me, it's bad for others. I know. It's all subjective. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, it's about what ignites the yes. passion in your soul. But like, there, is, there is the majority of people that they watch this series, sorry, stupid series on, on Netflix. Yeah. Not only Netflix, on any TV that, uh, uh, especially the Arab series, there is <laughs> this uh, stupid dialogue that you don't see it's real but mm. it's over but the people like it you cannot it's just entertainment it's not you cannot yeah. decide and some series from turkey like for example they the old generation they like to watch it from in like Ramadan. 600 episodes for example <laughs> you live your life to watch it and it's nothing repeating repeating anyways mad not all the people they like what you like so this, of course otherwise yeah. it will be one car brand yeah. one <laughs> yeah it takes all sorts to make a world yeah, yeah. okay and Faris, just to finish up um if there's one piece of advice you could give to a young photographer starting out who's you know about to embark on their career what what would you share with them yeah i of course uh, they have to move forward don't look behind you do whatever you like to do and be happy don't uh, yani, the most important is to think always that you can achieve everything in your life nothing will stop you if you are good and you put your soul in your work people will know especially now in this time uh, they know that you are good they know that they want you and be always positive and work in a very honest, honest way and don't go around, don't be in a rush to reach some, you know, to get a target, but take your time, time. There is always the right time and the right place and everything and you will know. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shivon. Thank you. <laughs>